please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day. In one night, there were heavy casualties. Under Moraine's leadership, the four young people escaped from the village. Thousands of Trollocs continued to pursue them relentlessly, chasing them from day to night. They had to reach the White Tower as soon as possible and join the other Aes Sedai to ensure their safety. Finally, they stopped and rested in a hidden place. One of the young men went to the river to fetch water. Suddenly, he felt a sharp pain in his foot. He rolled up his pants and discovered that his wound had worsened. It turned out that his wife had also been attacked by the Trollocs last night. To save her, he unleashed a powerful potential and killed one of the Trollocs. Accidentally, he killed his own wife, leaving an indelible wound. <laughs> Unexpectedly, the scent of blood attracted a pack of wolves, and they roared at him. He wanted to run back, but another pack of wolves surrounded him from behind. He closed his eyes in fear. A leading wolf slowly approached him, stared at him for a few seconds, and then proceeded to lick his bleeding wound. Afterwards, the wolf led the pack away from his sight. The group arrived at the ferry, but the river blocked their path. Moraine paid the ferryman ten times the price, and only then did he agree to help them cross the river. The boat slowly pushed into the water and left the ferry. As they crossed the deep water area, the Trolloc army had already reached the ferry. Faced with the massive Trolloc army, they did not dare to be careless. The Trollocs did not dare to advance, and the crowded Trollocs behind accidentally pushed their companions into the water. After struggling for a few seconds, the Trollocs sank to the bottom of the water. It turned out that they were naturally afraid of water, which bought them a brief escape time. As they watched the Trollocs gradually move away, the Trollocs could only roar angrily from the opposite side. The enraged subordinates in the dark let out a roar, a piercing and sharp sound that caused several young people to feel extreme panic. To prevent the Trollocs from crossing the river, Lon quickly cut the ropes and released the boat. The ferryman, eager to return home, jumped into the water and swam towards the ferry despite everyone's dissuasion. Moraine had no choice but to use magic to prepare to destroy the ferry. A ray of light slowly seeped into the river, and a huge whirlpool appeared in the middle of the river. Soon, both the boat and the ferryman were swallowed by the huge whirlpool at the bottom of the river. Although they temporarily escaped the danger, the young people were very dissatisfied with Moraine's actions. The next day, they wasted no time and rode horses over the mountains and through the jungle towards the White Tower. They finally stopped to rest in a secluded place. Moraine used the last of her strength to restore the horse's stamina, but her own injuries made her weaker. Some of the young people were unhappy with Moraine's actions and even had doubts. Moraine instructed them to rest as soon as possible and to depart before dawn. At night, Moraine approached Egwene for a conversation because she noticed a unique power in Egwene. Moraine placed a necklace in her hand and let her feel the supreme power. The necklace emitted a ray of light proving that Egwene possessed a tremendous power within her. When she can control the one power, she will become an Aes Sedai. Moiraine presented the necklace to Egwene as a gift. Egwene found her boyfriend, Rand, and they talked. Rand expressed his desire to be alone for a while. In the middle of the night, Rand suddenly woke up from a dream, feeling a severe discomfort in his throat. He used his hand to scratch his throat and unexpectedly pulled out a bat from his mouth. Rand thought he was having a nightmare. When he woke up in the morning, he found the bat from last night still on the ground, which startled him. He quickly went to meet his companions. To his surprise, he discovered a large number of dead bats on the ground. It turned out that the others had the same nightmare. He blamed Moraine for casting a spell that trapped them in the dream. Moraine told them that it was an ominous sign and they must leave this place as soon as possible. They had to reach the White Tower to escape the danger. The group quickly mounted their horses and continued on their journey. On the way, they encountered the White Cloaks, a religious group that harbored extreme hatred towards the Aes Sedai. Whenever they came across someone who used the One Power, they would kill them. For each Aes Sedai they killed, they probably wore their rings on their belts as trophies. Moraine handed over her ring to her warder, Lon, and concealed her identity. She dismounted and submitted to their inspection. But I'm from the borderlands. Along the way, Moraine's injuries worsened. They had to find a secluded place to settle down for the night. While they were sleeping, the roar of the speechless ones came from the top of the mountain. Moraine's condition deteriorated further, and she fell into a coma. Egwene, awakened by a horrifying roar, 
found herself in a state of panic. She looked up into the distance, and the murderal with the Trollok army caught up to them. Lon instructed the young people to quickly leave with the unconscious Moraine while he stayed behind to buy them time to escape. Thousands of Trollocs pursued them relentlessly through the jungle, chasing them from night until dawn. Suddenly, their horses refused to move forward, as if they were frightened by something. They looked ahead and saw a massive wall hundreds of meters high. Inside was an abandoned castle, shrouded in an evil power. The savage Trollocs dared not approach, and under Lan's guidance, the group slowly entered the castle through a crack. Inside, it was eerily quiet, which made everyone fearful. Lan carried the unconscious Moraine, and they entered the chapel to examine her injuries. Her wounds had worsened significantly, and they needed to find other AES Sedai to heal her as soon as possible. But for now, the only option was to let Moraine rest. Later, Lon told the group about the history of the castle. During the Trollok Wars, it was once a thriving city. They turned a blind eye to the war and built a hundred meter high wall to isolate themselves inside. After the war, people came here in search of food and found that the city was empty. No one knew how they disappeared and there were rumors that the city was cursed and would devour all living creatures inside at night. That night, Matt was awakened by a gust of wind in his sleep. Curiously, he walked out of the chapel and onto the streets to investigate. Matt seemed drawn by a certain force and entered a room. In a corner, he discovered a wooden box. Opening it, he found a dagger with a ruby embedded in it. Suddenly, the sound of bells rang outside and black sand slowly spread from the horse's hooves, instantly turning the horse into ashes. The other horses panicked and ran in all directions. The black sand quickly spread, separating the four of them. The spreading speed became faster and faster, about to engulf the entire castle. Lon hurriedly left with Moraine. Egwene and Perrin were forced to the top of the wall to avoid the black sand. In order to escape the black sand, they leaped off the hundred meter high wall. At the same time, Rand and Matt also escaped from the sewer. Now the group has been forced to scatter and lost contact with each other. Poor Nynaeve, dragged to the ground by Trollocs, is completely powerless to resist. Suddenly, the Trolloc releases her and approaches its injured companion. Astonishingly, the Trollocs start fighting amongst themselves. Terrified by the scene before her, Nynaeve immediately seizes the opportunity to escape in the opposite direction. Using the last bit of her strength, she slowly creates distance between herself and the Trollocs. But the Trollocs continue to pursue relentlessly. Nynaeve runs into a hot spring pool to hide. The enraged Trolloc roars and starts searching around the hot spring pool. Nynaeve carefully moves her body to avoid catching its attention. The Trolloc seems to sense some movement. She slowly submerges herself in the water as the Trolloc approaches the edge of the pool, stabbing at it relentlessly. Entering the pool to search, Nynaeve bravely stands up. She quickly pulls out the large knife from behind the Trolloc and plunges it into its chest. In its struggle, the Trolloc lifts Nynaeve up and they both sink into the depths of the water, blood spreading on the surface. Nynaeve takes a deep breath of air and slowly climbs out of the pool. After experiencing this life and death situation, she overcomes her fear and becomes even braver. She finds Moraine and demands answers from Lon, wielding the knife, asking him to reveal the whereabouts of her companions. Little does she know that the four young people from the village have already been separated by the black sand. The only way to find them now is to save the barely conscious Moraine. The next day, Nynaeve gathers some herbs and applies them to Moraine's wounds. Although there is some relief, Moraine is not awake yet. Egwene and Perrin have been walking through the desert for three days and three nights. In the harsh weather, they are on the verge of freezing. Finally, they stop in a desolate area to rest and quickly gather firewood. But their trembling hands fail to ignite the fire. In desperation, Egwene tries to use her magic and successfully lights the fire. They finally find some relief but they haven't had water or food for three days. Just as they are preparing to rest, a pack of vicious wolves surrounds them. With no other choice, they desperately flee, constantly being chased by the wolves. Suddenly, the wolf pack stops and dares not approach. Taking advantage of this, they continue running, putting more distance between themselves and the wolves. 